baptist has been executed by king herod john's crusading voice has been silenced the enemies of righteousness have prevailed how could anyone do good in a world where a man like herod could kill anyone who got in his way who can stand against such tyranny no doubt the disciples of Jesus must have experienced some discouragement at this. For if the axe could fall on John, couldn't it fall on Jesus? We pick up the story in the 13th, excuse me, the 14th chapter of Matthew. Now when Jesus heard this, the death of John. He withdrew from where he was in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. <coughs> this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now Jesus could have fed that multitude without five loaves and two fish. Without the disciples. But he didn't. Jesus let the disciples help, and he used what they brought to him. This is God's pattern, God's modus operandi. Look in the Bible, look at the record, and see how God takes people into partnership. When the great flood was coming and God wanted to spare just a few people, God called Noah, prepare an ark. When God wanted to establish a special branch of the human family, God talked to Abraham and said, Move to a land that I will show you. When God wanted to get slaves out of Egypt, he stopped Moses on the mountain and said, Go down and lead my people. When God wanted to construct a temple in Jerusalem, God spoke to Solomon and said, Build me a house. <laughs> When God wanted to strengthen and encourage people in Babylonian exile, he said to Ezekiel, speak these words to my people. When God wanted to help the sin-stricken Saul of Tarsus, God summoned Ananias and said, arise and go to the street called Straight. When Christianity was just an infant and God wanted to comfort people who were persecuted and suffering, he spoke to the prisoner named John and said, write this and send it to the seven churches of Asia. <clears throat> so the record reads. And so the story goes on. It is a record of God calling people into partnership involving them in what God was doing in their world and assigning them the jobs to do. To each of this, these people, 
God is saying, bring what you have, do what you can, and together we shall do something for the world. When the Israelites were oppressed, God called Deborah from her judgment seat. When the Midianites were fighting Israel, God called Gideon from the threshing floor. When troubled Cornelius prayed in Caesarea, God got Peter and Cornelius together. When the Hebrew people were brutally afflicted by King Ahab, God called Elijah from underneath the shade of the big tree. When God wanted to get Jesus into the world, he spoke to a young woman named Mary. You shall bear a son and call him Jesus. That son Jesus is at work in the world today. And he invites us to join him. Now you may say, but there isn't much I can do. I don't have much to bring to it. My talents are small. My resources are few. But re be reminded, my sisters and brothers, that that's precisely what the disciples believed when they brought Jesus five loaves and two fish. They were surprised. And you may be also when you bring to God your gifts. For when what you give is put together with what God gives, miracles happen. Here is an instance where 2 plus 2 is not necessarily equal 4. For the combination of your gift with God's gift is not a matter of addition. <coughs> it's a matter of multiplication. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 16 is 256. And only God knows where it's going to end. So you may think that your assets are small, your time short, your abilities ordinary, your talents meager, your strength unequal to your needs. But bring it on. Bring all those assets into partnership with God. And you'll be amazed at how great they actually are. When I was a small child, if you said hello to me, I would back all the way up into a corner and turn and face the corner. It was extremely shy. Wouldn't speak to anybody. Except y'all are brothers. But I wouldn't speak to anybody. If God can take somebody that shy and put her right here this day, what do you think? Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. But I gave my assets, my little bit of talent, and God used it. And God can do the same with you. The disciples long ago made the discovery that they had far more when they put it in Jesus' hands. Yet suppose the disciples tried to do it without him. What if the Thursday after this feeding of the 5,000, um, the disciples invited all the folks in the neighboring villages and said, come and we'll feed you. I wonder what would have happened. I doubt that episode would have made it into the Guinness Book of World Records, unless it was in the category of gigantic failures. While the disciples learned that day that they had more than they thought they had, the disciples also learned that without Jesus, it wasn't worth very much. Without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. God is looking for people with whom to work. We need the divine touch to accomplish anything which will ultimately matter. Partnership with God where all of life's good qualities are at their best. 
where all of life's assets are worth the most. All life's achievements reach their highest point. We are not mere pupils, but participants. Not just receivers, but givers. Workers together with God. This is who we are in every kind word we say, every thoughtful deed we do, every gift we offer, every glory we share, every healing touch we bring. We are partners with God in the ways that we use whatever loaves and fishes we have to give. Partnership with God. Ponder that.